Hello viewers, this is Osama Khurshid Khan with program Cutting Edge. Today we will talk about the United States and Palestine. As the United States President Donald Trump has threatened to halt aid to the Palestinians if they do not agree to take part in peace talks. The State Department confirmed he was talking about aid for economic and security assistance. Mr. Trump accused the Palestinians of disrespecting the United States of America. Mr. Trump said that why should we do something for them when they do know nothing for us? The Palestinians have rejected the U.S. as a neutral broker in peace talks. Because they are furious at Washington's controversial decision in December to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Interestingly, the former Palestinian negotiator Saib Arikat said of the United States President's latest comment that Trump could buy many things with his money, but he won't be able to buy the dignity of our nation. Now, the question pop up in the mind, why the focus is on the Palestinian aid? Let me tell you that speaking at the World Economic Forum in Davos at Switzerland, Mr. Trump said the U.S. gives the Palestinians hundreds of millions of dollars in aid and support. He chastised the Palestinian leadership for disrespecting their great Vice President Mike Pence by refusing to meet him in the region earlier in the week. And he said that he was the first U.S. president to link the issue of aid funding to the peace process. Now, the money is on the table and it's not going anywhere, until and unless the Palestinians sit down and negotiate the peace process. Those were the words of Mr. Trump while the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu was sitting beside him. He said so that he can tell you that Israel does want to make peace and they are mean to say the Palestinians going to have to want to make peace too or they are going to have nothing to do with it any longer. Now that's a two-edged sword. The answer lies and if we analyze the whole situation this seems to be the first time that the White House has used aid as a bargaining chip to try to force the Palestinians to negotiate peace. It's one way to shake things up in hopes of getting people back to the table. There would be at least a shock if the United States withheld the bilateral aid. Most of it goes to economic development projects, though some is also used to train the security forces. But let me tell you that the practical outcome of Mr. Trump's statement might be limited. Because Israel needs the Palestine army to run the occupied territories and make counsel against weakening it. Politically, this has made the Palestinians even more inflexible about rejecting sole United States leadership of any peace talks. Another angle is that Mr. Trump's maneuver, how, uh, however, underscored the failure of President Mahmoud Abbas, who staked everything on the US-led process and now might have less than nothing to show for it. Perhaps this will be what it takes to shake up the ossified Palestinian leadership. For mutual stakes and long-term policies, it should be understandable by the Palestine and Israel that they can't change their neighbors, whereas the United States of America should act properly as a mediator rather than offshoring power. That's it for today. We'll see you in the next program. Till then, take care of yourself and your national affairs. Take care. Bye-bye.